We end tonight with the longest body of water in America, more than four times as long as the Mississippi, measured not in miles, but letters. Here's Steve Hartman with Assignment America. There's a lake in Webster, Massachusetts. What lake? It's hard to say. Why don't you tell me how you say the name of the lake? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that, and I've been practicing. Okay. Susan Frieswick is president of the local okay. Chamber of Commerce. Charamanga. It's her job to promote businesses on the lake. Char Char lake Chargog. And yet, Manchagagog. Even she can't say what lake. Missed the last part. Obviously, I didn't practice it enough. <laughs> okay. In Susan's defense, for most people, mastering the name of this place is a lifelong pursuit. One at a time. It typically begins in the third grade. Very good. Here kids learn it's an old Indian name. They learn it's longer than any other place name in the country and wider than their gym. We ran out of room. And they start to learn how to say it. <laughs> Got that? Me neither. Which brings us to Lake Association president and expert lake name sayer Dick Casalt. Supposedly, he knew the right pronunciation. Other pronunciations? Pronunciations. 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 Obviously, oh, I was skeptical, but he rattled off a pretty convincing rendition. Lake Chagagagog, Manchagagog, Chibung, Agungamug. Wow. Fact is, most people go to great lengths to avoid saying the name Lake Chagagagog, Manchagagog, Chibung, Agungamog. Instead, they like to call it Webster Lake after the town, or simply the lake. Anything but have to say the whole name. Chagagagog, Manchagagog, Chibung, Agungamog. Unfortunately, someone still has to know how to spell it. Does that look right to you? It's not. Although for the last six years, it's been close enough to fool almost everyone. I pay attention to spelling. Carla Manzi runs the gift shop. It's her job to cram the 45 letter name onto shirts and hats. So of course, she noticed the sign right away. Yeah. How come you never told anybody? I did. I think apparently it fell on deaf ears. Who's gonna know other than us? For six years, that was the thinking. Until one extremely observant tourist from Arizona notified the local paper. The scam was up and the sign was changed. Awesome. Question now is, do they know their police cars are wrong too? Perhaps a story for another day. Come back again if you've found any errors in my pronunciation. 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 <laughs> God, and because I know you're going to ask, the name roughly translates to boundary fishing waters. As for next week, I have no idea what I'm going to do for next week, so I'm looking for your ideas. If you have one, go to cbsnews.com, click on Assignment American, tell me about it. All right, I'm going to try to some, come up with some ideas for next okay. week. That was very cute. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Have a good week. And that, you too. And that is the CBS Evening News for tonight. I'm Katie Couric. Jeff Glor will be here tomorrow. I'll see you again on Monday. Thanks for joining us this week. Good night. Now it's six.